Hi, Toby Hodges from Yachting World on board brand new Grand Soleil 72 Performance. This is a pretty sensational yacht, not just to look at, but for the yard itself, because it marks uh, a massive step up in the sort of above 60 foot range of performance boats, which they build in their separate shipyard in Farno. So we're gonna have a good look over this boat, but I think it's a, a pretty stunning design. It's, it's a very, very performance orientated hull shape with a massive amount of beam, very modern uh, and all of that brings you a lot of volume and a lot of potential performance a full made in Italy product let's have a look through it now so it's designed by Matteo Poli and uh, with structural engineering by Marco Lostuzzi and now to design interior uh, so it's a full made in Italy product you can tell here it means business Massive integrated bow sprit there with the bow roller below. Tack for the Genica, Co Zero furler, Genoa furler, and then uh, the below deck one there for the stay sail. There is, you can have an inner pad eye as well for a storm sail. I've got the sail locker open here. This can be a crew cabin, but we'll see when we go below in the main interior. They've included a good crew cabin aft so this is mostly a sail locker it does have you know it does have a heads in here and a fold down bunk uh, if they do have extra crew on but it's basically set up to have six guests on board and two crew in the main accommodation which leaves this great big sail locker so moving aft over this huge flush foredeck you get to start to appreciate the beam and potential power of this yacht this has the self tacking jib option on it but there are yeah, longitudinal rails there as well for having a larger head sail it has the running ring so the halyards are there's a powered winch each side of the mast with tail lockers integrated into the coach roof there uh, which means it keeps basically all of the running rigging up this end of the boat keeps it nice and clear at the aft end to make it clean and simple to manage from the aft of the yacht. This has uh, an Axon mast and a brand new furling, carbon furling boom from Made in the, in the Netherlands. There is the option to have an opening, double opening hatch uh, in the main coach roof and this has gone for a skylight for this owner. Neat detail here is how if you do have the longitudinal tracks, the sheet will run through that, through the, through the actual handrail itself and aft. So it keeps that cockpit super clean. And then it just leaves really the four winch setup. So you have the primary winch here and then the main sheet winch right aft. And what that means is the, the yacht will be run principally by the skipper. Um, and it will be used by the owner and chartered as well so okay he'll have help from another crew when busier but it means you know you're controlling all the sail systems from from the two pedestals really so it is relatively simple um, big power primary winch and main main sheet winch aft which can be used as mooring winches as well there is also the option to have a main sheet, a central main sheet plinth for the winch here as well. So below all this deck area aft obviously is uh, is the dinghy garage. So it's still being finished so that will obviously have struts on it 
and that gives you access as do the hatches under the helm to the dinghy garage so 3.3 meter rib will go in there I think as well you see the top of the rudder stuck there and then the watertight bulkhead separating the interior that leaves a very very spacious low profile cockpit area with the twin tables which can be that you can order obviously telescopic ones to drop down and fill in the other thing to note about this design and, and it's a it's a big point as well is is that it's offered as a lc a long cruise model which has a higher coach roof area and a raised saloon it's also very very cool looking and the second one of these will be an lc and that launches next year Now, I'll just show you a quick look with these lights on, and then obviously they're going to play with the frame rate of the camera, so I will try and turn these lights off a bit so it doesn't flicker all the time. Okay, so we turn the raised indirect lights off, so hopefully not so much flickering now. Things, the main things to point out here, you'll see it really, is the beam. The beam, once again, that creates this massive area, and I think... A real quality of this yacht is the GA, the general accommodation plan is very, very smart because it, 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 by putting the galley there, you have an open plan format that links to this massive use of the beam central. And then look at that one walkway right through the yacht. It makes it feel, it feels enormous. This, I'll probably keep repeating myself, but this feels like an 80 footer, easily not a 70, not a 72. The other thing to note, it is a performance yacht. You know, this is a 31 ton boat, which is yeah, very, very impressive really to build it to that weight. Everything that went on board was measured for weight and it came out as 300 kilos underweight, under the designed weight, which yeah, for a production yard is, is very impressive. So Vinalesta hull and then uh, unidirectional carbon reinforcement and carbon structural reinforcement and everything all the furniture is foam sandwich so even though it looks like lovely teak it's uh, teak veneer but this, every panel here is apart from the solid steps is super lightweight foam and even the headlining here is fabric no wood used up there so real attention to, to weight management um, yeah very very impressive so whether it's this performance model or the lc that galley is offered as a forward version the problem with that is then you would lose this aft crew cabin now i think this is a format that work well because you get a big seagoing galley that links well to the saloon area but it also means you have an integrated crew cabin rather than sticking the crew up in the fore peak you know they're in the yacht as they would be on a maxi style yacht so Pullman cabin in here with a proper ensuite and the uh, washing machine in there as well there is the potential to put its own access into here but the skipper and an extra crew will obviously live in here and then come in through the galley this yacht is equipped with um, a trash compactor and below here is a water filtration machine which means you know you can use water make of water and then you get proper mineralized water that comes out of the tap as sparkling uh, or cold fresh water so no bottles needed and then moving forward obviously you have a huge italian style this is a nauta interior design as i said it's all made in italy it's and designed in Italy. Um, yeah, very nice contemporary design. Number two, I believe, has oak finish on it. This one gone for a natural teak look, which I think looks lovely. The uh, you can this has a fixed 3.7 meter keel, but there this area here would be given space to a telescopic or lifting keel if you ordered it. So the depth of the fixed keel ranges from 3.2 to 4.2, I think, and this has a 3.7. 
There are two main guest cabins and the owner's cabin on this. This is the forward one and there are no cheap seats here. This can be like this, a twin or a double as well. And with a generous ensuite and separate shower. And bear in mind this, you know, we just finished with the can show and we'll go back to the yard for the final detailing. Uh, the finish quality looks and feels superb. It really does. And then you get into here and here's another you know, owner suite, but another thing that I'm referring to about the general accommodation plan being very clever. So it puts the, a very, very large heads and shower area aft to create this wonderful amount of space in the owner's suite. That is a big, big bed. Once again, pointing to the amount of beam in this yacht. Very nice and light, loads of natural light coming in here. The air con's blasting out as well, which is quite pleasant in this heat. Uh, this area here can be used and will be used by others as a desk. Uh, so you can put a little office part in here as well. Plenty of stowage in all these lockers. And then the same, you have a very nice large heads and separate shower area moving aft. So that this performance model has this single level all the way until you get to either the galley or move into the aft cabin where it's just a small step down. Engine access from the companionway steps or um, there's a main door to it behind here or if you didn't want to, if the crew don't want to interrupt the guest cabin, this panel here removes for doing um, quick engine checks and you know, oil level etc. And this is the um, yeah second guest cabin. Similar sort of size, really, really nice. There are panels there, access to the um, extra tech room and machinery area. Again, light, loads of headroom. Feels like a much, like a cabin on a much larger yacht. So that opens out and you have a three quarter height door to give you know, full access into the engine room and genset. Now what would change there is with the uh, LC version, you'd have a raised saloon. So you're looking directly out of the coach roof windows as well, which are higher. Uh, and that would give more machinery space there. So the genset, water maker, etc., would move under here. Uh, the engine would always obviously say central below those steps. So this is a 3.1 million euro yacht, th between there and 3.5, and rep I think represents very good value for money for that, because they have done a very, very good job in building it, and um, it's enormous. It really is. For You look at it from the outside, you think, wow, that's a sporty performance yacht, and then you come inside and you get this sort of luxury. Um, something you would expect maybe of, a, of an 80 footer or so and it's a real step up for Grand Soleil and looks like we'll see plenty more of them with three of these on order maybe a fourth and uh, more big yachts to come hope you enjoy the tour until next time